reports a right now of uh, heavy fighting in the capital city. Trey Yingst is there right now. Trey. Neil, you can hear the air raid sirens behind me. Right now, the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv is under attack. Just a few minutes ago, we heard a large explosion off in the distance. It was so loud and heavy that it shook the windows of our hotel. My cameraman captured an orange glow on the, uh, the skyline, and this is really an indicator. The attacks against this city are ongoing. You hear the air raid sirens continuing in the distance. Uh, early reports indicate that the initial target of that big strike at the beginning was a radar communications military center just to the southeast of our location. But this is also significant because the day has been quite uh, placid here. There were ongoing peace negotiations on the border of Belarus between the Russians and the Ukrainians. There was a phone call between the French president, Emmanuel Macron, and Russian President Putin, all conversations about peace. But as you can hear and see on the ground, this country is at war. Neil? Do we know, Trey, whether the Russians now are upping the ante and, and they don't care if they're targeting civilian sites or apartment buildings or, you know, areas concentrated by just average folks, not military types or suddenly, you know, recruited soldiers? They are. This weekend, we were at the scene of a Russian missile attack in the capital of Kyiv, where two people were killed and six others injured. This missile slamming into the side of a residential building, and the sirens that you hear right now were sounding throughout the weekend. A lot of this fire is indiscriminate, not only here in the capital of Kyiv, but across Ukraine. Kharkiv, the second largest city, taking shellings overnight with multiple civilian casualties reported. The Ukrainian health ministry says more than 350 civilians have been killed since the this Russian invasion began. Neil? I'm curious, Trey, because all of this, as these peace talks, well, there are of them along the Belarus border, um, are going on. And, uh, you know, that was a hopeful sign that maybe at least the start is better than, than the immediate results. This is complicating things, I would imagine. It's absolutely complicating things. And I think the early images out of those peace talks really said a lot. You saw the Russians show up in suits and ties, the Ukrainians arriving in fatigues. This is a country that is digging their heels in and preparing for war. We also know a little bit of information about the call between French President Emmanuel Macron and Russian President Vladimir Putin, that call lasting for more than an hour. And I think this really gives you some insight into where things are headed. According to the French, Putin was requesting that the Ukrainians recognize Crimea, an area of land that was annexed by Russia in 2014. He's also requesting that the entire country become demilitarized. So these are two things that aren't going to happen. There's no way. And it really gives you a sense of how unrealistic the claims and requests are by the Russian government and Russian president himself. And remember, it's Russia who invaded Ukraine. And now they're the ones trying to make these demands of the Ukrainians as they look to defend their country. Trey Ying, Stinky, thank you, Trey, very, very much. Uh, we'll go back to you on any other further developments here. Be safe.